I'm going to create a short video to show you guys how to do some manual forensic calculations to locate files within the hexadecimal binary string of the raw data of your data set, in this case within the forensic container E01 file. So first of all I'm just going to select an active allocated file, in this case I'm just going to choose a picture. I'll just use a keyword search and find something. I'm going to use this picture right here. I'm going to bump to the metadata real quick. And within here, I want to locate my starting cluster number for where this file exists. And that number is 1,854,836. Now that is a cluster number, not a, a physical sector number, not a byte offset number. We need to do some calculations or basically a simple calculation to identify that number so we can then locate it within the raw binary data view uh, relative to the volume. Now it's useful to note that a cluster is a logical construct of a volume which um, compared to a physical sector number is actually relative to the start of the actual physical device. And Nuix uses the starting cluster number to to track this information and either one of those are forensically fine and sound within the field. And then so we have this number right here. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to notate my file name. I'm going to look at the binary real quick just so I can see the beginning of it so I can look for this information when I do find it for just a little bit of cross-reference. Okay now I'm going to uh, jump out of this and switch my view back to results. And one thing I want to note to you is that under the metadata of these file system structures, there's some useful information. So as we're on the EO1 file, if we look at the metadata, there is some EO1 file metadata information in there that's useful. Under the unnamed container, we also have some information that tells us about our partition information, tells us the number of bytes per sector, the number of partition table entries, and this is telling us that it's a, a Windows partition. Next we're going to, to look down here to, the, to my actual volume, which in this case is titled OS Disk for this particular evidence item, E01. So I'm going to look in here and find some very useful information. What I first want to look at when I'm looking at the metadata, I want to look at the file system cluster size, and that is 4096. This means that um, within this particular NTFS file system, there are 4096 bytes per cluster, uh, which when broken down is eight sectors. Pretty standard for an NTFS uh, file system. Now we're going to note this number because we need not only this number but also the starting cluster number from our previous picture that we're going to track and we're going to use that and, and perform a calculation and then do a search for that physical location in the bi binary data here uh, of the of the volume because we're actually working off of the cluster location that is relative to the volume not the actual start of the physical image. So let's go to binary view. The first thing I, uh, that I want to do next is I'm going to open calculator and I'm going to have the calculator in programmer mode uh, and I am going to start out with some decimal numbers so I'm going to I'm not going to have it on hex yet I'm just going to look at the decimal numbers and I'm going to perform a, a calculation. I'm going to put in that decimal number for the starting cluster location, which was 1854836. Now what I need to actually find out is the actual byte offset from the beginning of the OS disk, which is how we're going to locate that information here in the binary. So I, I need to take this number, multiply it by 4096, the size of each cluster, then I get this number right here, which I'm then going to copy. I'm just going to do a control C. This is the decimal value of, the, of that location we're going to find. If I want to actually get the hex representation of the same thing, I just click my bubble over here to hex view. And then now I have the hex, that same, that very same offset, but in hexadecimal notation. And you can write both of those down. And so we'll get rid of that. And now as you see, because we are working on tracking our file based upon cluster information, once again not physical sector location, we're going to look relative to the beginning of our volume, which in this case is labeled OS disk. 
And then if I was here in that view, I would go over to binary view. Now, as you note here, these are all bytes. So to actually locate that specific position for the beginning of that one file, what I would need to do is I can come right down here. And you may not have ever noticed this, but these are boxes that you can actually type information into. And I can do one of two things, right? I can, uh, I can input that hexadecimal number that we got, or I can just type in the byte offset and uh, in decimal, rather, and Nuix do the calculation for us. So just to do it simply, I'm going to use the decimal number. I'm going to click in here, and I'm going to enter in that decimal number. I'm just actually going to paste it. Control V. Now I'm going to hit Enter. And as you see, Nuix jumped right to that. Okay. And so here's this location, right? Here's the beginning of that of that actual file that we were looking at, right? And it is, in fact, the same. So that is where that one file located that we looked at. That's sort of how to, to identify how and where Nuix is physically locating its artifacts for cross-reference and other tools um, and whatnot. The next thing that I want to show you guys is how to track the actual uh, physical location of a file that has been data carved by Nuix. And so we'll start out in that endeavor. I have a case up here and I am just going to, to pick out a data carved picture and so I'm just going to come down here and look into my irregular items and tell Nuix to show me data carved items. And then I'm just going to pick a picture to make it easier and go to my thumbnail view and this looks good. I'm going to use this right here. Now it's very useful to note that when Nuix data carves something, it names the file based upon its byte offset, which is different than tracking actively allocated files, which has a master file table entry on an NTFS file system that um, can, where the actual starting cluster number can be gleaned from. Whenever you're data carving, in particular from unallocated space, you really need to talk and address things in bytes. So when Nuix data carves items, whether it's a picture or a document or just some raw text in unallocated space, it is going to give you a hexadecimal value within the name. And this is a byte uh, offset information relative to the actual volume. And the first string is the starting byte location and the next part of the file name is the ending data carving location in bytes. These notations are in hexadecimal format. So let me just show you this real quick. Here's an image. Let's look at the metadata real quick. What I want to show you is within here, we have this, this file name. These are the hexadecimal notations, uh, starting hexadecimal byte offset, ending hexadecimal uh, byte offset. In here within the properties, Nuix actually gives you those locations in decimal number. So the actual byte starting value for where this file is located on the disk in unallocated space is 103817216. And then of course you have the ending offset. Let's bring up a scientific, or rather a programming calculator and let me just show you something real quick. Let's take this number and do a little cross validation. This is a hexadecimal number, so I'm going to start my uh, programming calculator in hex view, and I'm going to enter this number right here, this hexadecimal. Now, I do not look at the uh, x. You do not include the x in when entering uh, hexadecimal in information in. That is not part of the address. So you, we disregard the x, and I'm going to start in by typing 0630 Zero, zero, zero. And then I'm going to quickly uh, calculate that into decimal by changing my decimal view and I have this number 103817216 and look that equals up that matches up nicely. Now I'm going to close this out and the very next thing I'm going to do is show you the, the second part of the file name which is the ending address in bytes notated in hex. 06306 06306 7C4. I notate that and change it to decimal. I get this number and that, that 
matches up. Now we do not need to do any further calculations because these are actually uh, numbers in bytes which is what we need to work with when we go actually go into our binary view. So let's go back to the results view and close things down a little bit so you guys can see. And now here from the actual volume in this case right from this location this is as you can see this we have the the EO1 file and interpreted out and then of course we have this container where we're in the the name of this which is uh, which has been named demo Intel. Now I'm going to switch to my binary view and the very next thing I'm going to do quite simply is to come down here to the offset. We do not need to make any additional calculations because we already have a byte value which is what the binary uh, hexadecimal window here deals with. So I'm going to enter that number, the starting location of that file. 103817216. Enter. And as you can see here, what I have found is, let's just see the beginning of this file. And I have some information here that I can look at. Now let me just go back and see if this appears to be consistent with that beginning location. And to do that, I'm going to go back and relocate my file. Irregular items. Data carved. Thumbnail view. And a th believe it was this picture right here. Sure enough, same information. That's how you locate and identify information in unallocated space that's been data carved. Now if, if I wanted to take a little snippet of information out of this and maybe report on it, if one wanted to notate some very specific information out of a chunk of uh, binary text, pulled out raw from an unallocated space, I can show you that as well. If I come down here under irregular items and invoke the data carved filter just to find a, a, a file to deal with here, let me just pick out an unknown binary file that might have some text. See if any of these are better than... Uh, let's just take this one, I guess, uh, for example. But if there's text in something like this that can be displayed and you can access the text tab, let's just say that uh, this is very important to me right here, this actual identification of a particular file system location. I would actually bookmark this file and, and then for that I would potentially, um, I would come in here and I'm getting ready to bookmark it. But what I want to do is I want to highlight something of particular interest here. And if I do this and then I do a control C I can then invoke and come in with, with a comment and say excerpt of relevance from data carved text. It's sort of a note and then I'll come down a couple levels and do a control V and actually paste that information and say OK. Now you can see that I have a comment on that and then I can go and add tag and I could come down here and create a, a new tag and I could call this uh, data carved excerpt and with that I'll just say okay and one of the things that I would want to do then is when I'm going to report on this was to also make sure under my metadata profiles make sure that I choose a metadata profile that actually has the comment in it and then so which in this case would be something like I'm just going to select my default metadata profile for simplicity and let me look at it and make sure I actually do not have comment in here so let me let me go ahead and edit this and add in metadata no to find metadata let me see if I can find comment so I will add that in there. So now I have that as part of my default metadata profile. And I can just say OK. And that should also be added in for that one particular file there that uh, I bookmarked. And let me go to my tagged items. 
and yes that is in there and then so when I go to, to create a report on this or just to see what it would look like in a report I could select this one item and do a right click and say export export items and then create a test report data carved info save and I'll just uh, choose my default metadata profile I just hit OK now we'll show you what that looks like when you actually report on it we'll jump to the report when it's finished and I will come in here and just launch this report.html and, and here is that information um, this is the summary report which included all this information I added in the comment and I have excerpt of relevance from data carved text and then of course here is what is important if I wanted to I could come in here potentially and add some highlighting if I wanted this to stand out a little more um, if I wanted to see the full item report of course I can pull all that information out right and in this of course I'm going to actually have the full text of that this entire file and as you can see what I'm saying in here is that uh, I'm sorry here within this comment here here you see, you see what we're highlighting that we want to draw attention to and it's, it's this piece of of information out of the the full text so that is in essence one way that you can selectively isolate some data carved text and bring it out to uh, highlight it in a report and to show its particular relevance a, a particular string out of an entire uh, text for an item thanks for watching